Now let's run through some examples of how to use uh, sampling distributions. Let's see, make sure I'm clicking in the right places so the examples work. All right. So the sampling distribution of the means, we've got some exercises going on here. I need to make sure things happen here. First, uh, let's imagine that we have access to some summer camp children's ages. And all these children's ages, let's say all the kids who are at all these summer camps around the world or something, anyway, some population, that all the ages of these kids are have a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 3. And the distribution is approximately normal, so you know the sampling distribution of means is going to be very normal, etc., because you're already starting out from mostly normal. So we imagine an infinite number of samples from this population, and each sample has a size of 16. Yes, Moses? I hear you. Cat. Uh, so find the mean of that sampling distribution and the standard error of that sampling distribution. I'll show you the answers in a second, so pause here if you don't want to know. The mean is going to be the same as the mean of the original distribution. We know that the mean of the original distribution is 12 years old, and so the sampling distribution mean is also 12 years old. No problem. The standard error, in other words, the standard, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means, is the original standard deviation, which is 3, divided by the square root of the sample size. Sample size is 16, so 0.75, 3 quarters of one year. So here's um, an overlay showing those two things together. The, the dashed gray line is the, cor the curve, our best estimate of the normal curve of the original distribution. The, the true distribution wasn't perfectly normal because nothing is, but all we know about it is it was normal and it had this mean and standard deviation. So that's our best guess. And then the blue curve is the sampling distribution of means. It's much skinnier. More of the data is piled up in the middle. So... It has a standard deviation of only 0 0.75, whereas the other one, the original raw scores, had a sampling distribution of 3. So that's how that works. So let, now let's imagine this distribution, but we take an infinite number of samples with n equals 144. I'm making the math very easy because I'm using n's that are perfect squares, which of course doesn't happen all the time in real life. But you're going to have to take a square root of that, so it makes it easier. So find those two things. And if you pause here until you find the answers, uh, I'm about to do it. The mean of the sampling distribution of means is the same as the original sample distribution, and the same as the last sampling distribution of means. So the mean of the means is the mean. It's 12. No change. The standard error now is the original standard deviation divided by the square root of 144. So this is 3 divided by 12, which is only 0.25. So it's about a third the size of the original. What's exactly a third the size of the, of the, of the previous... Uh, standard error, and of course it's a twelfth the size of the original standard of the original distribution standard deviation. So here we go. This is what this looks like. Now you can see the gray line down at the bottom is the original population, and the blue line is the sampling distribution of the mean. And I should find a way to make that a little less jagged and crazy looking. Anyway, putting both of those two things together, you've got both sampling distributions. The blue line now is the sampling distribution for n equals 16. The green line is n equals 144. And the dashed line, the gray one, is the original distribution of all raw scores. So another set of exercises like that. A company makes cables. They all have to be some exact length. They're very concerned with quality control. Um, so all cables produced for a month, you should be thinking that's a population. All. They might be saying sample, but I'm about to tell you it's a population. And I'm going to use mu and sigma so you know it's a population. So the average, what is this, about length or diameter? Yeah, let's say it's diameter, I don't know, 1237. The point is, whatever we're measuring about them, is um, 1237 millimeters, and the standard deviation is 124 millimeters. I think it better be length. So for the sampling distribution of n equals 9, find the mean of that sampling distribution and the standard error of that sampling distribution. Okay, here come the answers. The mean is the same as the original distribution, which is 1237. So one point two meters, more or less. And the standard error is the original standard deviation, 124 millimeters, divided by the square root of the sample size, so divided by three. So that becomes 41.3 millimeters instead of 124 millimeters. So this is how the raw score and the sampling distribution compare to each other for a sample size of nine. Now that same situation, but a larger sample size. Now a sample size of 100. Now find the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. In other words, the mean and the standard error of the sampling distribution of means. Okay, answers. The mean is the same as the original again. 
the mean of the sampling distribution of means is the same as the raw score mean, which is 1237. And the standard error, or the standard, or the standard deviation of our distribution of means, is now 124 divided by the square root of 100. Wow, my daughter's getting really excited in there. Um, divided by the square root of, of 100, which is divided by 10, so it's 12.4 millimeters. Smaller than the last one, so we can see that this sampling distribution is much smaller now. Putting both of these over the top of each other, you can see how they relate to each other. Larger sample size is skinnier sampling distribution of the means. Sampling distribution of the means loses variability, gets lower and lower variability, which is very good. We like small variability here. So a city in New York takes a census of its population and looks at age, finds out that the mean age is 43.1 years, standard deviation of 2.7. So let's consider all possible samples of n equals 9. Find the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution of all possible means of n equals 9. Here come the answers. The mean is the same as the original mean. And the standard deviation is the original standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So 0 0.9 years. 27 divided, or sorry, 2.7 divided by 3. 0 0.9 years. So this is what that looks like here. The blue line is the sampling distribution. The dashed line is the original distribution. So let's try this again, but now with a large sample size again. Sample size of n equals 100. Find the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means for sample size n equals 100. And here come the answers. The mean is the same as the original mean, 43.1 years. The standard error or the, of the standard error here is 2.7 now divided by the square root of 100, which is divided by 10. So it's 0 0.27 years, much smaller. So putting both of those two things on top of each other there, we see how much smaller the n equals 100 sampling distribution is than the original raw scores and even than the, than the uh, n equals 9 sampling distribution. Now this is a little bit different, but you should be able to work this out, I think. And if not, give it your best shot and, and then you know, look at the answer and learn. So looking back at summer camp children's ages, and let's go back to the idea of n equals 16 children, 16, a sample size of 16. So we're looking at a sampling distribution of um, n equals 16. What percentage of those sample means would we expect to be greater than 13 years old? You'll have to use your normal table and you're going to compare it to a normal distribution that has a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of whatever the standard error is. You have to calculate that standard error. You need to convert that into z-scores and then look up those z-scores in your normal table to find the, the area above whatever the z-score for 13 is. But not the z-score for 13 with this standard deviation, the z-score for 13 with this standard deviation divided by the square root of 16. And what percentage of individual campers, so now back to the raw scores, would be greater than 13 years old? So now you should use the normal approximation, but use this standard deviation to, to find your z-score for 13. So you'll be finding a z-score of 13 with two different standard deviations. And so you'll have two different z-scores, and you'll find the area beyond, like area above those, those z-scores in both cases. And this is about what you should get. So the ages of the original sample campers, so you've got 13 here. It's the same dividing point because the number line says 13 no matter what. You can't match up the z-scores because they'll be different for the raw score and the sampling distribution if I'm going to overlay the graphs like this, which I sometimes do. But you can match up the raw scores. 13 is there no matter what. Well, the area greater than that in the normal distribution, there's a lot of area greater than that. It's over one-third, so 0.37. And you should get something similar using your table. And the area greater than 13 for the uh, distribution of means, you should find that only 9% of the area is greater than that in the distribution of means. So that means you'd have about a 37% probability of finding, of randomly selecting from all these possible campers, a camper, one camper, who was 13 or older, or older than 13, it doesn't really matter, but you would have only about 9% chance of selecting a mean, or selecting 16 campers whose mean was greater than 13. So those probabilities are very different. So back to the cable example. So work out both of these probabilities. What percentage of cables, in other words, raw, sc <coughs> raw scores and the raw score distribution, would have a diameter of less than 1,200 millimeters? 
And then what percentage of sample means from sample size n equals 16 would have a diameter less than 1,200 millimeters. So work out these, these two answers here. Oh wait, there's a third one. And then what percentage of sample means from sample size 49 would be less than 1,200 millimeters. So work these things out. Here's the answers of everything. You've got the original distribution. So this is, you know, the line is here at 1,200. So the shading under the original distribution, there's a lot of overlapping here. The shading under the original distribution shows the probability of finding an original, an, an, an individual cable, just randomly sampled from all cables that the company makes with a diameter of less than 1,200 millimeters. And that area is about 0.38, about 38%. Now with a sample size of 16, this blue line, we can see that there's a little bigger chunk of the area involved here. So that what that interpretation would be, if we were to randomly select 16 cables and calculate the mean, there is about a 12%, 11.6% chance that we would, that the mean would be lower than, lower than or equal to 1200. But if our sample was 49, if we randomly select 49 cables, there's only about a 1.8% chance, and that's that teeny area under here. I mean, it goes all the way down, right? But it's that teeny area under here. There's only a 1.8% chance that we would get a sample size, or that we would get a mean of 1,200 millimeters or less. So a city in New York takes the census. We've got the same situation. What ages among the raw scores, and it's a, this is a confidence interval essentially, what ages would include the middle 68 percent of individual ages, so raw scores. That's not really a confidence interval, that's raw scores. But this is a confidence interval. If we were to take all possible samples of n equals 25, so a sampling distribution of the mean for n equals 25, then what ages would include the middle 68 percent of sample means? So what means, mean ages from sample sizes 25 each would be found in the middle 68 percent of all possible mean ages? So work this out and then we'll go to the next slide. And here we go, eventually. So the raw scores, we can use the 68, 95, 99, 7 rule. Plus or minus one standard deviation on either side of the mean includes about 68% of data. And that's what I was hoping by saying 68%. It's a pretty suspicious number there. So if the standard deviation is 2.7, you just go up 2.7 and down 2.7. So if the mean is 43.1, we could find the middle 68% of raw scores by just going up 2.7 to 45.8 and down to 40.4, right? That's the raw scores. But the sampling distribution of means is much more skinny through the magic of Photoshop and squishing. Probably not even Photoshop. So the standard deviation there is 0 0.54. So we have to start from 43.1 and go up 0 0.54 and down 0 0.54 to go one standard deviation either way to find the middle 68% of means. So 68% of means if the sample size for each of those means was 25, is that what it was, 25? Will be found between 42.6 and 43.6, within one year of each other, one year of age. So this is stuff looking uh, all together here. So the original distribution here, this is the middle 68%, the blue shading. But then the middle 68% here is still 68% of the area, but it's in a much smaller space on the x-axis. So that's a one standard deviation or a 68% confidence interval. And if you just do plus and minus one standard deviation, or standard error, I mean, because it's not really a confidence interval if you're using the raw data. It's a confidence interval if you're using the sampling distribution of means. So if you do one plus or minus one standard error, you have a 68% confidence interval. There you go. That's how it works. A confidence interval is just the middle something or other percent of a sampling distribution of means. And that sampling distribution has to be from a particular population with a particular mean and a particular standard deviation, so we can figure out the standard deviation and mean of the sampling distribution of means, right? So the original population gives us that. And usually we have uh, three points that we like confidence intervals for, 90%, 95, or 99%. Every once in a while somebody gets weird and decides to do a 50% or a 68% or a 99.9% .9 confidence interval, but those are very rare. 95 is the most common followed closely by 90 and 99%, and that's it.